Florida time again. Yep, time to go out to California, down to Hollywood, California, and uh, talk to Michael Snyder in California. Have I said California enough in this opening here? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. I'm actually, I'm sitting right under the H on the Hollywood sign. So there you go. Yeah, I'm really here. I'm here, people. Uh, anyway, yeah, welcome to yet another uh, Culture Blast via GabNet, Roku, etc. with me and Alex Bennett. Um, and I guess we'll get right to the new films, such as they are. It's still the doldrums. It's still the post uh, uh, high-end Oscar release period in January. You know, some of those films are in the theaters now. I would hope they are, and you could enjoy them. But then there's the new stuff that the movie industry feels compelled to roll out. So let's go uh, right along with Ride Along. Ride Along 2, uh, as I recollect, Ride Along itself wasn't as bad as it should have been, to, to my uh, knowledge. It was a buddy comedy, a comedy, an action movie with rapper, actor, film, uh, filmmaker Ice Cube as a no-nonsense Atlanta cop and the jabber-jawed comedian Kevin Hart as a wannabe cop who's in love with the real cop's sister and, of course, rides along onto a, uh, a uh, typical day in this guy's life, uh, the cop's life, and finds crime and inadvertently helps the guy solve the, the, the criminal activity. As annoying as Hart is, and to my mind, he's Chris Tucker with a slightly less uh, shrill voice, and a slightly less juvenile comic style, he seemed a little reined in by playing off the stern and unflappable character that uh, Cube portrayed. And the inevitable sequel is actually worse. Uh, and even there, they, they've added Ken Jeong as a horny hacker who works for Benjamin Bratt's Miami crime lord, and Olivia Munn as a uh, no-nonsense Miami cop who uh, has... She has a suggested romantic chemistry with Cube. It's non-existent. So now Hart is a rookie cop after uh, helping Cube catch the bad guys in the first film, but his character is still a screw-up who somehow helps Cube overcome the villains. Uh, let's uh, switch an old uh, phrase around. He's the blind nut who somehow finds a squirrel. Uh, the Atlanta cops are trying to stop a drug and a gun smuggler. And the trail leads to Brat in Miami via Jong's goofy hacker, who becomes another over-the-top sidekick for Cube. I'm sorry I took this ride. It just goes in circles. It travels the same route as the first one to lesser impact and fewer laughs such as they are. Okay, uh, let's get serious if we can for a second. Michael Bay, that's right, Mr. Transformers, um, you know, Mr. Uh, uh, the Rock, uh, etc., uh, has made a serious movie ostensibly based on real events, 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. Although this is considerably better and more nuanced than a Transformers movie, director Michael Bay and his confederates turn the complex and convoluted real-life conflict and tragedy of the Benghazi-Libya attack on the U.S. Embassy and CIA compound on 9-11-12 into an amped-up, high-tech, high-volume action flick with lots of explosions, including a few biggies that purportedly didn't happen, uh, but amp up the kaboom factor. It's based on Mitchell Zukoff's nonfiction account of the events that ended in the deaths of four Americans, including the ambassador who died of smoke inhalation and two mercenaries who died in a firefight with Libyan insurgents. It's also long and occasionally numbing, at two hours and 24 minutes. The best known actor in the film is John Krasinski, Jim from the American version of The Office, whose wry, why am I putting up with this nonsense attitude is actually pretty appropriate for the crap storm depicted here. He's one of the contracted mercenaries who are a bunch of ex-Marines and SEALs, and they're supposed to be the last line of defense against an enemy who might threaten American lives in Libya, but the uh, craven local CIA honcho keeps them on a leash until things get too out of hand and they have to try and save the day. There are Libyan soldiers for hire, ostensibly helping to protect the Americans, but you know what those guys are like, you know, or if you don't, they will show you. I'll just close out by saying that this is not uh, no American sniper, uh, which actually... This is uh, called what again, so we can forget it? It's called 13 Hours, mm -hmm. and if you want the full title, it's 13 Hours, uh, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. It's not quite as terrible as it should be. I mean, it's actually, again, better than uh, a Transformers film. It's not quite up to Con Air or uh, 
the rock movies that he made earlier in his career that I kind of enjoyed. Uh, but if you're looking for something like Zero Dark Thirty, you're not going to find it here. Okay, here's a, a film I really liked, Moonwalkers. It's a pretty entertaining and amusing comedy that suggests what might have happened if the U.S. government was worried about the propaganda fallout at the first planned moon landing uh, by men didn't happen as intended. So uh, the government ostensibly sends a violent agent and Vietnam vet with dangerous PTSD to secretly hire director Stanley Kubrick to shoot the fake moon landing because, you know, he did 2001 A Space Odyssey. He knows how to make a movie look like it's actually in outer space. So uh, the agent is played by the hulking Ron Perlman, who is pretty ideally cast. And instead of finding Kubrick in London, he's misled by an inept rock band manager, played by Harry Potter's Rupert Grint, the red-haired guy who plays Ron Weasley in those Harry Potter films. And he convinces his idiot stoner friend, played by Robert Sheehan of the TV series Misfits, to impersonate um, Kubrick, which the guy does to an extent with pretty funny results, uh, including dragging Perlman and a cast and crew out to a hippie mansion in the suburbs of London, a place that's overrun with sex and drug-addled young people, and uh, and they attempt to shoot this fake moon landing. I, I thought it was pretty funny, actually. I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it just crackled right along and had some nice period detail. Generally speaking, uh, I give it a recommendation, but it will be fun to watch on video. Uh, in the Shadow of Women is the latest film by uh, French director Philippe Garel, who did um, a uh, previous movie uh, to this one, something rather similar, uh, basically about a love triangle uh, involving a guy making documentaries in Paris, his wife, and a woman who kind of helps him uh, on the technical end of things. And it's in black and white, it's widescreen, it's very intimate, uh, it's in French, there are subtitles, but it was pretty fascinating to me it kind of worked it got intimate it actually reminded me like of john cassavetti's kind of gritty interpersonal dramas back in the day and uh you know um it's, if you like this sort of thing and i do i think uh, in the shadow of women is pretty cool um and um Let's wrap it up quickly by dismissing 400 Days, which is a science fiction film about four astronauts who are on a supposed mission. They're simulating a mission to another planet. They want to see what um, effects will uh, be had on people during deep space travel. They're supposed to be uh, in uh, this program uh, for 400 days and of course the people start freaking out uh, it didn't really work for me too well uh, and I also wanted to mention uh, one other film that I thought uh, was kind of cool called Band of Robbers and what it is is sort of a uh, an update of uh, Mark Twain's characters Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn uh, about these guys uh, basically as adults and crooks who uh, are trying to find a treasure like they did back in those books that Twain wrote. And I thought it was really cool, really well shot, really witty, really funny. Uh, it's not going to get wide release, I don't think, but Band of Robbers, kind of cool. And nobody famous in the thing. And uh, oh, M Melissa Benoist, who plays Supergirl, is in this film. So you'll recognize her and uh, Supergirl on the CBS TV show. But most of these people, you know, well, I kind of look looks familiar, TV actors and such, but you know, Kind of cool. Kudos to Aaron Nee and Adam Nee, uh, who wrote and directed Band of Robbers, which I give a, a recommendation to. Kind of enjoyed it. Uh, speaking of television stuff, uh, what are you watching, buddy? Anything going on? No, nothing much, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I know. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Uh, any uh, visits to the theater in the past week? Uh, no. You haven't gone to the cinema with your beloved to watch a film? No, we've been watching most of our films at home, so. Yeah, uh, but nothing on TV or, uh, I, I'm really enjoying The Returned, the uh, French, uh, you know, back from the grave drama in its second season. I will say that it's been running on Sundance Channel and uh, it's, it's uh, I guess, available on demand here or there. And, um, you know, uh, The Expanse, the sci-fi thing, which is a uh, complex but film noir sci-fi still watching that and enjoying it i got bored with it after the first episode so took till about three to, to really understand the complexities i think well, if you binge well, my, watch it my you might time get more my time is valuable 
<laughs> oh, fine. Well, let's not waste any more of it. You can uh, hear me here on uh, GabNet and Roku most weeks, and uh, also check out my uh, Twitter feed at Culture Blaster, and go to Facebook to Michael Snyder's uh, Culture Blast page, like it, uh, click on to our conversations, read articles, and uh, I guess that's it until next week, man. I guess it is till next week. I just wish better movies were coming out. When you say, did you go to the theater? Why? You know, exactly. You know. But uh, thank you, Michael. We appreciate it. You got it. And more GapNet continues. <laughs>